Aeneas will be the hero, the central character, in a play consisting of two short dramatizations, the first half from Homer's Iliad and the second from Virgil's Aeneid, which we shall be performing in this new theatre in St John's on Wednesday the 19th and Thursday the 20th of February. But he was also a hero in the old-fashioned sense of the word, a brave warrior, and both Homer and Virgil describe him as second only to Hector among the defenders of Troy. But he's a more complex hero than Hector or Achilles, at times self-doubting, enigmatic, and that's why we probably remember him best for what happened after the fighting was over at Troy, for how he went down to the world of the dead, or for his tragic affair with Dido, Queen of Carthage. But a hero in the full sense of the word, he undoubtedly was, and this is a direct result of the role he accepted in defeat. Look hard at this famous image of Aeneas escaping from Troy, still in armour, with his aged father on his back and holding his small son by the hand. It was used by Julius Caesar on a coin minted in North Africa 20 years before Virgil started work. And it is central to a proper understanding of Aeneas's kind of heroism, a more mature heroism. You're going to have a unique chance to observe his evolution because we're going to let you hear the hero's own words in the original languages Homer's Greek and Virgil's Latin, accompanied, of course, by surtitles. We hope this will give you a fully nuanced portrait of the whole complex individual. It will be an intensely dramatic evening because we shall be drawing on the experience we've gained in similar productions during the past ten years. Notice above all how the speaker's voices and faces convey their emotion. Ude pan calceos euchetai enai, o franemeai ai genemec teimus. Tus nion ec pagla filesi, tontina carres usaha iado meu peplon, posi dica cona restos an enopea. The city of Troy and the fate of the Trojans form the backdrop for the whole action in both halves. The first, drawn from the Iliad, is called Troiae Tutamen. It shows Aeneas as the guardian or bulwark of Troy. We see him as a distant cousin of Hector, honour bound to defend the city from the invading Greeks. And in the final scene of this first half, he seeks out no less a hero than Achilles to fight him in single combat. But his contribution is in vain. The city is captured and burnt to the ground. In the opening scenes of the second half, we see the slaughter and destruction of that night through Aeneas' own eyes in one of the most glorious passages of poetry ever moulded by the lips of man. In fandum regina iubes renovare dolorem, Troiana sutopes et lamentabile regnum eruerint danai, quaeque ipse miserima vidi, et quorum pars magna fui. But then the emphasis shifts to the future. We follow him as he escapes from the doomed city with his aged father, young son and wife. We hear prophecies that he and his son will survive and arrive in Italy. He is now the hope of the Trojans. This is the title of the second half, Teocrorum Space because it has been decreed that his direct descendants will, in the fullness of time, found a second Troy, a future Troy, that is to say, Rome, a Troy whose empire will never end, the Roman Empire. The themes of hope and destiny lead us on to the other most important dimension of the play. One of the reasons why Aeneas is a rather elusive hero is that he's an involuntary hero, even a reluctant hero. A man singled out by Zeus to fulfill his providential plan for the future of mankind. And the situation of Aeneas as the chosen one is complicated by the fact that the Olympian gods as a whole are self-willed and interventionist. They often have their own personal plans affecting certain individuals in the here and now. 
With regard to the fate of Troy, the Olympians have divided into two rival factions, one pro-Trojan and the other pro-Greek. For example, Zeus's wife, Hera, or to use the Roman names, Jupiter's wife, Juno, actively supports the Greeks, whereas his daughter, Venus, takes the side of King Priam, if only because Aeneas is her son and she's a loving and hyper-protective mother. As a result, from the beginning of part one to the end of part two, Aeneas goes on receiving direct help from Venus and is under unceasing attack by Juno. In both plays, this supernatural dimension is kept constantly in view, and you're invited to engage with a vision of history as the outcome of an interaction between human forces and the divine. Huge themes, then, as well as powerful emotions.